They call it the HP Victus, and these are the benchmarks that are going to be coming up in just a few minutes. Now, if you're curious about my full thoughts on build quality and usability of this laptop, I filmed a full unboxing, and you can check that out in the YouTube cards above. This video is gonna focus on performance, color accuracy, battery life, and things that I've learned about the laptop over the past week of using it. First and foremost, I'm not stoked about the screen wobble. So whenever you open the screen and kind of just like let it go, it has quite a lot of wobble. So I wish that that was not the case. Also, there's quite a bit of screen flex on the top of the screen as well as at the bottom of the screen. Other than that, I am impressed with this laptop, especially at the price point. And compared to the HP Pavilion, which I'm gonna do a full head-to-head -head review of, you can check that out in the YouTube cards above, I do actually prefer this laptop. Now the HP Victus does not have the best color accuracy. In fact, it doesn't have good color accuracy at all. So that's gonna be one point that you're gonna see dinged against it if you're comparing this to the HP Omen. And that I will be doing a dedicated head-to-head -head review on as well. You can check that one out in the YouTube cards above. But as you can see, the color accuracy on the screen now, it is one of the things that might lean some people away from choosing this laptop. And regarding the audio experience while editing, listening to music or watching some shows, here's a quick sample of that. Now the keyboard is an exact replica of the HP Omen, and if you know my thoughts about the Omen, I love the Omen keyboard and trackpad. Here's a quick sample of me using the keyboard and trackpad so you can tell how that sounds. Regarding battery life, this laptop does have some on-the-go capabilities. I was quite impressed by the battery. If you switch it on to quiet mode, turn the brightness down to half, you can get pretty solid streaming playback and productivity tasks, whether it be video conferencing, uh, working in Word docs, whatever it might be for kind of your day-to-day -day productivity workflow. Now, as you go into video editing and Photoshop work, the battery does shorten quite a bit. Now for video editing, I took a 4K project, put it on loop, ran it at half brightness till the battery ran out. For Photoshop, I took the Puget Systems Photoshop benchmark, which is a very intense Photoshop workflow, and ran that on repeat until the battery ran out. So if you're doing some less intense Photoshop work, you may be able to get a little bit longer battery out of this laptop. Now this laptop does have a very easy upgrade path. Simply flip it over, pull the screws off, remove the bottom cover, and you have access of the SSD as well as the RAM configuration to be quickly swapped. Now I recommend Team Group. They have a lifetime warranty and a lot of great options. And I've actually created some videos about how to choose the correct RAM. And you can check that out in the YouTube cards above if you're wanting to upgrade this laptop from say eight gigs to 16 or 32. Now recently something I've been doing is giving you guys access to the full benchmark suite. I don't post every single benchmark I run during the video, so if you wanna see all the benchmarks I ran, go ahead and text the word Victus to 850-306-4644 and I'll text you that benchmark sheet and you can check it out. Now let's jump into the benchmarks, but before we do, do note that this is the i5 RTX 3050 model. I know a lot of people wanna know about the Ryzen 5 model or the Ryzen 7 5800H model, and I do as well, but when I ordered this laptop, this was the only one available. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna include the HP Omen with the Ryzen 7 5800H on the benchmark charts, and that'll give you a close perspective on how this laptop would perform with a Ryzen processor and RTX 3060 GPU. Because these chassis are so so similar, I'm anticipating very close performance. So if you're curious about the exact pricing differences of those models, I'm gonna go ahead and link the Intel and Ryzen versions in the description below. You can check the live pricing. And if you wanna make a purchase, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. That just keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Now, jumping into Cinebench R20, R23, Geekbench single core and multi-core, we're gonna kick off the benchmarks now. Moving into 3D modeling, you can see that this laptop is good, but not great, especially compared to that Ryzen 7 processor. So if you're considering 3D modeling, it might be advantageous for you to upgrade to that Ryzen 7 to get more performance. Moving into After Effects, I was surprised by this little i5-11400H. It was able to keep pace 
with a lot of the bigger processors. If you see there, there's an MSI Creator 15, which has the latest i7 10875H processor in it. So this laptop does pack a punch for After Effects. Now, as we move into the After Effects render benchmark, because this is a four gig VRAM graphics card, the RTX 3050, it does not have the greatest After Effects render performance. But overall, this laptop is pretty impressive for the spec that it has. For the export times from 1080p all the way up to 6K, these are nine minute clips that I put into Premiere Pro and then export out for the results. Now looking at playback in Premiere Pro, this saw zero drop frames at 4K, did pretty solid in B-RAW and really struggled with that red footage. For DaVinci Resolve, the export times were pretty good. Um, I see Ryzen often winning out as far as export times are concerned with DaVinci Resolve. Now, one test I've been really enjoying doing is putting the laptop into different fan modes and then testing the export time, thermals, and fan noise to see how well this laptop performs. At quiet mode, this laptop had a really solid export time and stayed at around 63 to 65 degrees Celsius. So if I were using this laptop, I'd run it on quiet mode. It's gonna have solid performance, it's gonna be quiet, and it's gonna run cool. Pretty awesome. Now moving on to Photoshop, you can see it's a 747. That is a solid score. You're not gonna have any problems if you're using this laptop for the Adobe Creative Suite, Figma, the Affinity Suite, Sketch, whatever design tool you're using, it's got the power that you need. And if you go ahead and upgrade the RAM, you can see a substantial increase in performance heading up to 32 gigs of RAM. I wouldn't really make the jump to 64. I don't think it'd be beneficial if you're doing the upgrade for Photoshop alone, but 32 gigs of RAM definitely gives you some more performance in Photoshop. Now, I also ran the test at different fan modes, so you can see the temperatures, the score, and the thermals at different fan modes for Photoshop. Links if you're ready to make a purchase, likes if this video has brought you some value, and subs if you don't miss out on the future uploads. I'll see you here in the next video.